now I have a question here design a column 3.5 meter center to center length under a load of 2000 kilo Newton use M20 concrete and FE 415 steel so solution given length that is 3.5 meter PU load 2000 kilo Newton and it is on factored load if the question doesn't specifies it as a factored load then it is termed as unfactored if it says that under ultimate load that is a factored load similarly FCK is equal to 20 Newton per mm square FY is equal to 450 Newton per mm square the very first step is to calculate the depth and width of the beam from clause 39.3 you can find PU is equal to 0 0.45 FCK AC plus 0 0.67 FY ASC and AC is the area of concrete and ASC is the area of steel in concrete now consider uh, P percent that is percentage of steel in concrete or in column is equal to 1.5 percent then AC that is area of concrete will be 100 minus 1.5 times 100 into gross area AC is the gross area and 1.5 percent of the gross area is steel then remaining that is 98.5 percent will be concrete so AC is equal to 100 minus 1.5 by 100 into AG similarly AC is equal to 1.5 by 100 into AG then substituting the value of AC and ASC in the above question then PU is equal to 1.5 times 2000 into 10 to the power 3 converting into Newton and 1.5 is for the design converting the unfactored load into factored load that is 1.5 is equal to 0 0.45 into 20 into 98.5 by 100 into area of gross area into AZ that is gross area plus 0 0.67 into 415 into 1.5 divided by 100 into gross area AZ on solving AZ is computed as 230136.35 mm square and considering a square column then gross area is equal to b into d and for square b is equal to d then b square and b is equal to under root 230136.35 which will be equal to d and b is equal to d is equal to 479.7 mm nearly taking this value as 500 mm then providing 500 into 500 mm square column second step effective length as the question has not specified about the restraining of the ends so we considered restraint on both cases that is position and rotation so L effective is equal to 0 0.65 L as you can find in the code 0 0.65 into 3.5 that is 2.275 meter third step is calculation of slenderness ratio lambda is equal to L effective by B L effective is 2.275 divided by 0.5 B generally B is taken as the least dimension so I have written B uh, 4.55 less than 12 so it is a short column for loading condition EX and EY has to be computed EX is equal to L plus L by 500 plus D by 30 L being 3500 for L you have to use the clear span okay if so 3500 by 500 plus D is 500 and 500 by 30 this comes to be 23.66 and uh, as the, it is a square column the value of EX and EY will be same and that is 23.66 mm similarly the value of 0.05 D and 0.05 B will be same that is 25 mm since EX is less or equal to 0.05 D and EY is less than equal to 0.05 B hence it is designed as short axially loaded column okay then from clause 39.6 for short axially loaded column PU is equal to 0 0.45 FCK AC plus 0 0.67 FY AS and substituting the value of PU that is 1.5 into 2000 into 10 to the power 3 0 0.45 into 20 into now AC is area of concrete and it is computed as AZ minus A steel that is a gross area minus area of steel and gross area is 500 into 500 so it comes to be 2500000 minus AS plus 0 0.67 into 415 into AS now on solving we get the value of AST that is 2787.5 mm square so this is the area of steel that has to be provided in the column 
Now fourth step is reinforcement detailing. Providing a bar size of 20 mm longitudinally, that is longitudinal bar, area of individual bar will come as pi 20 square by 4, which is 314.15 mm square. Similarly, number of bar can be computed as total area of steel divided by area of individual bar. So this comes as 8.87, nearly taking as 12 NOS. Now you might ask, we could have provided 10 NOS, but I am considering a four-phase column. Now what is four-phase column? Let us see here. Two-phase, if columns are provided only in two direction and four-phase along four direction it is four phase and basically for four direction it should be in the multiple of four that is 12 is a multiple of four where 10 is not a multiple of four and two phase column is generally provided for uniaxial case and four phase column is generally provided for axial case this is a note okay you don't have to show in the step now area of steel provided what is the actual area what is the actual area of steel provided then number of bars into individual bar area 12 into 314.15 so this comes to be so this comes as 3769.5 mm square now we have to check for the minimum reinforcement that is as i have already discussed in the previous video of column that is minimum 0.8 percent of gross area 0.8 divided by 100 into 500 into 500 this comes at 2000 mm square which is less than that of the area of steel provided that is the minimum criteria is checked and area of steel maximum that is 6% of gross area this is computed as 15,000 mm square which is greater than that of the steel provided so this is also okay now for lateral tie so these are the transverse reinforcement provided for preventing shear failure okay and the size that is 5t is taken as a greater of 1.1 by 4 into 5 L that is 5 L is the longitudinal dimension of the bar this comes as 5 mm or it should be greater than or equal to 6 mm so the value greater 5 t is equal to 6 mm the second is pitch which should be minimum of the three values so the very first is 16 times 5 L 5 L being the diameter of the longitudinal bar that is 16 into 20 320 mm or it should be less or equal to least lateral dimension of the column and it is 500 mm and or it should be less than 300 mm so among these 300 mm is the least value so taking pitch as 300 mm then we have to check whether an extra stirrup is required or not for holding the bars now it has to be done along x-axis and along y-axis now let us draw the reinforcement detailing so 500 being the overall depth 50 being the effective cover along x-axis and along y-axis 400 is the effective depth and uh, two bell numbers of reinforcement provided in four phases the spacing between bars can be computed as 500 minus 2 into 50 divided by 3 because 500 is the overall depth effective cover is provided at the two ends so 2 into 50 and number of bars or the number of spacing along x-axis is 3 so 3 and we get this as 133.33 mm which is greater than 75 mm and according to IS 456 clause 26.5.3.2 B1 if the spacing between bars exceeds 75 mm then extra stirrup is required now we have to check which type of stirrup is required a uh, open type or a closed type and for this spacing between the corner bar is computed and it is computed as 500 minus 2 into 50 that is the effective cover so overall depth minus twice of effective cover that is 400 mm and this is compared with 48 pi t and 48 into 6 that comes as 288 mm and it is less than that of 400 mm so a close type stirrup you can find this in IS-456 class 26.5.32 B2. Extra stirrup is required along x-axis which is a closed type. Now along y-axis, as we have already said, the dimension along x-axis and y-axis is same. So the value will also come same. 
So spacing between bars is equal to 500 minus 2 into 50 divided by 3 that comes as 133.33 which is greater than 75 mm. So similarly 400 mm greater than 288 mm same as D is equal to B. So an extra stirrup is required which is a closed type along Y axis. Now let us draw the reinforcement detailing. Note, okay. If B is equal to D, then E X will be equal to E Y as we have already seen in this question. That will make 0.05 D is equal to 0.05 B, and stirrup check is same for both X and Y axis. And if two-face column is designed, provide bar in the direction of D.